Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a nice little Ryzen powered laptop that I recently picked up as a Christmas gift for my wife. These were recently on sale at my local Best Buy, so I figured I'd go ahead and give it a try. And for the specs here, I mean, this should do a pretty good job. My wife has been looking to upgrade her older AMD laptop. She's got like an older Acer with a 17.3 inch screen and a non Ryzen AMD CPU. I mean, it's pretty old now, and it's definitely getting dated. She didn't want a huge gaming laptop, and I figured that this would be perfect for her use case scenario. But I have to test it out first, and we got to see what we can run on this little thing. This is known as the Yoga 6 by Lenovo, and as you can see, it is a convertible. We've got a 13-inch screen here. Over on the left-hand side, we have USB Type-C for charging the unit up. We've also got a full-size USB 3.1 port and a 3.5mm audio jack. Moving over to the right-hand side... We've got our power button, another USB 3.1 port, and USB Type-C 3.1. This will do display out. So when it comes down to it, it's not the highest spec out little machine, but uh, for a carry-along, I think it's going to do just fine. For the CPU, we have that Ryzen 5 5500U, 6 cores, 12 threads with a base clock of 2.1 GHz, and a boost up to 4.0. I do want to mention that right out of the box, this APU is set at about 15 watts. But if you go into the BIOS and you turn on performance mode, it jumps up to 30 watts, which will unlock a ton of performance out of this little chip. We've got 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4 at 3200 MHz. Unfortunately, it's soldered to the board. There's no way to upgrade it unless you opt for the 16 gigabyte model right out of the box, but the price on that is just way higher than the 8, so I stuck with this one here. We've also got a user replaceable 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD. A 13-inch 1080p IPS touch display, and the unit I have here came pre-installed with Windows 10, but as soon as I started it up, it asked me if I wanted to upgrade to 11, so that's what we're on with this. So the first thing I threw at this was Forza Horizon 5. This is far from a gaming machine, but uh, in this video we're going to be testing out a bunch of games and emulators. We're at 720p, very low settings with resolution scale set to performance. We actually got an average of 71 FPS. I was kind of blown away by this, and I know that we're at 720p, but it was still pretty impressive to see this brand new game running on a little laptop like this. So I did want to take it up a bit, and unfortunately, at low settings, resolution scale set to performance, and 900p, we just can't hit 60. We got an average of 57 like this. All right, so here we are. Like I mentioned, I'm running Windows 11, and along with that Ryzen 5 5500U, we have the built-in Radeon 7 graphics. I wanted to give you a quick look here. They should be running at 1800 megahertz, and we can always check this. Let's go to sensors. We'll start a quick render test. I've actually had really good luck with this running through 1800 megahertz, but remember, in the BIOS, I'm set to performance mode. That's really where it's at with this little laptop. Overall usability has been really great with this thing so far. Uh, email checking, you want to do some video playback from YouTube, web browsing, all that's going to be super snappy. I mean, we definitely have enough power on the CPU side of things, and with Wi-Fi 6 built in, you should get some really good speeds. Let's go to PCs and tablets. Everything loads up really quickly here. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's actually a really snappy little experience, and I kind of expected it to be with that 5500U. Let's go over to YouTube real quick and just check out a little bit of video playback. All right, so here we are with YouTube. And I'm only at 1080p, but we're still going to set this up at 4K. Give it a second for everything to buffer in. So our viewpoint is going to be at 1080p, but this is going to be a 4K 60fps video. And we shouldn't get any drop frames. Even when this thing is at true 4K coming out of that USB Type-C to video, you're not going to have any kind of skips or anything like that with 4K60 playback. This thing does an amazing job. As you can see up in the top here, I do have stats for nerds going. And we have zero drop frames. We don't even have any drop frames from the load in, which is something that happens a lot on these laptops or lower end chips that I test. I always like to run benchmarks on these laptops, so let's go ahead and check those out. I just went with a few here, and first up we have Geekbench 5. Single core, 1093, multi, 5214. And I was actually expecting a little more out of the multi core on this, given that we have those extra 12 threads. But overall, it's not bad for this lower end chip. I also went with 3D Mark Wildlife. This is a Vulcan benchmark for that built in GPU, 6453. And finally, Night Raid with the 12,739. 
So these benchmarks really aren't that impressive, but for the chip we're working with here, they're really not that bad. But now it's time to see how this thing handles PC gaming and emulation. That's what I was really interested in. And I do want to mention before we get started here, this is not marketed as a gaming laptop whatsoever. All right, so first on the list, CSGO 900p medium settings, and this is perfectly playable. Personally, with a laptop like this, I would just go ahead and lock everything at 60. That way, the GPU and CPU don't have to work so hard, and it will keep the temps way down. But for these tests, everything will be unlocked except for the emulators. And with CSGO, we got an average of 97 FPS. Here's the OG Skyrim, 900p, high settings. I had a good feeling that we'd be able to run this at 60. Now, I did try it at 1080p, but I had a lot of dips down into the 50s, around 53 at 1080. So I took it down to 900p, and everything's looking good here. We're at a really stable 60 with it. If you did want to run this at 1080p, I would drop it down to medium, maybe a little bit of a medium-low mix, but you should be good to go with this game. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite did way better than I thought it would. We're at 900p with a medium-low mix, and the game still looks great on this 13-inch screen, even at 900p. And with it set up like this, I didn't see any dips under 60. It's really playable on this little laptop. And finally, for the PC games, we have GTA 5. Now with this one, I did have to drop it down to 720p. We're at normal settings, 100% resolution scale. I didn't even mess with any of that. I got an average of 62 FPS at 720p. I did try 900p, but I was only getting an average of around 53. So when it comes to emulation on the 5500U, I've always had really good luck, especially when we're able to go up to those higher wattages. But with the easier to run stuff like GameCube, PSP, Dreamcast, you don't have to pull that much. You can actually do these at 10 watts. So here we have GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, 1080p, Vulcan backend, Automotalista running perfectly. I also wanted to test a little bit of Wii U emulation. You're not going to be able to go to 60 with this and you can't upscale much, but at 720p using that Vulcan backend, even Breath of the Wild is playable at 30fps. There are some easier to run Wii U games that will work at 60fps 720p with the SimU emulator and the 5500U. In the last two years, this emulator has come so far, I mean the developers have really been putting it in with this one, and it's working amazingly. And the final thing I wanted to test here was some PS2 emulation. PC SX2, 720p, DirectX 11, Ratchet and Clank, running great. We're at the balanced preset in PC SX2, and I've had really good luck with PS2 emulation on the 5500U. And when it comes to the easier to run stuff like PSP and Dreamcast, this is going to do it at 1080p, probably even higher, no problem at all. Even the harder to emulate games with PPSSPP work amazingly with the Vulcan back end. So in the end, I gotta say I really enjoy using this little laptop. If there was something with like the 5600H, then I would probably be okay with just using this as my main laptop. But uh, unfortunately, with the stuff that I personally like to do, I do need a little more power out of it. It's got a beautiful 1080 IPS display. It is touchscreen, and I'm personally not a big fan of it. But if you're into these touchscreens, it does work well. We've got a backlit keyboard. It's a single zone with white LEDs, and there's four points of brightness on it. It does work as a backlit keyboard. I mean, you can definitely see this when the lights are low. I do wish it had HDMI built in, but you can always use a USB Type-C to HDMI adapter. I mean, that's really the only way to get video out of this if you want a wired connection. And Ethernet is non-existent. Again, you'd have to use an adapter. But a lot of these laptops are really moving over to that right now. 
So if you're interested in learning more about this laptop, I will leave a couple links in the description. I would definitely wait for a sale on these. They can get a little expensive, but when they're on sale, I think it's really worth picking one of these up if you need a secondary laptop or if you need a lightweight, moderately powered laptop. This will definitely get you by for day-to-day -day use. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the Yoga 6, be it more emulators or more PC games, just let me know in the comments below. And like always... Thanks for watching.